Hiya folks, welcome back to Goss with Handyman and a brand new section of the channel, Test Tuesday, where we are just going to take some common our garden joinery products and tools and bits and pieces and just test them often to destruction and just see whether or not the manufacturer's specs are in line with real world specs. And there's a lot of this sort of stuff where it's actually quite hard to get hold of the specs of it as well. And today we're gonna to start off with my old favorites for fitting stuff into plasterboard, into drywall, and that is expanding metal anchors. These are by far my favorite thing for fitting heavy things into plasterboard, into drywall whether it's going into a wall or on the ceiling. They're rated to around 15 kilos of axial force. In other words, the force going straight down through it or the pull force pulling it out of the wall. Around 15 kilos is uh, the rating for drywall. Obviously it depends on the, the fixing and the size of it and the thickness of the drywall and all sorts of other things. But 15 kilos is kind of the figure that go through my mind when I'm using these. So we're going to try the 5x43 ones and then we're also going to try the 5x52 which are slightly heavier duty just to see what the difference is. And as I say we're just going to be measuring uh, axial force which is kind of your worst case scenario because normally you're going to have something hanging off it, a shear force and a shear force in something like this because the wall is physically in the road it can handle a much much higher load whereas an axial force where it's pulling straight out of the wall is kind of your worst case scenario these particular ones are i think they're screw fixers own brand um but you can also get them made by fisher i'm going by the specs of the fisher fittings they look the same and they look like they're made of the same material as these so i'm assuming the loadings are going to be about the same but we'll just see what these ones can actually withstand. Oh, and kind of my first in the series of this was ages ago when I tested red wall plugs. So if you've ever wondered what sort of forces red wall plugs can withstand in brick and breeze block and stuff like that, I'll include a link in the description to that video because I think you'll be quite surprised at what a humble little plastic red plug can put up with. But as I say, today it's the turn of drywall plasterboard fittings, heavy duty fittings. And before anyone starts, yes, you can get heavier duty fittings than these. But I find these are the most versatile in terms of, because obviously you can get things like your spring toggles and stuff. But the trouble is you can only use spring toggles once because as soon as you take the screw out, the toggle falls down inside the wall and then you have to get a new one whereas with these you can unscrew them and screw them back in as many times as you want um, there are obviously things like snap toggles as well uh, be interesting I will test those at some point we'll see what sort of loadings they can withstand but generally speaking for most stuff that you're going to be attaching into plasterboard you'll probably find that these are easily sufficient not for things like great big massive radiators and stuff you know the whole the plasterboard will just give way let's see what they can actually withstand so these are really straightforward to fit all we do is drill a hole into the plasterboard pop it in obviously you would get rid of the dust pop it in where's my hammer can't find a hammer screwdriver and what I should have mentioned as well is you just want to, well it doesn't really matter, you can do it now, but just unwind a little bit of the screw, so unscrew a little bit so you can get the setting tool in. These fittings are designed to be used with a setting tool. If you try and fit these without a setting tool, things will go horribly wrong. And that's probably the most common problem that I see with these sort of fittings is that people try and use them without using a setting tool and it just kind of spins around and chews up the plasterboard. That's not how they're designed to be used. Use a setting tool, this is a really good Fisher setting tool. It cost us about 50 quid or something, this one. Um, I do recommend this, very, very 
um, hard wearing, robust. I've had this for years and it's lasted and lasted. There are cheaper ones, but you really do get what you pay for with this sort of stuff. And then I'll just show you on the other side. So you'll see what it's done. It's expanded out to um, grip into the plasterboard. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a screw out of another fitting just to hold the chain in place at the bottom. Let's see what we get. So I'm just gonna pause every now and then just until it stabilizes because obviously there's gonna be a certain amount of slack in the chain and in the fittings as it kind of bends slightly. So we're up to 18, 18 kilos of force at the minute. 30 kilos. Oh, I can just feel it starting to go. It got to about 40 kilos there. I'll probably pull all the way through the plasterboard now, I would suspect. Yeah. Interesting to note that even once the plasterboard's completely failed, that we're still getting 12 kilos of force on that fitting. I mean, obviously you wouldn't trust that at that point, but not bad for a completely failed fitting. Okay, so I want to do a similar test now, but I want to rule out whether or not the base of this is providing any extra support. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna alter the base of the test thing so that it doesn't provide as much support on the plasterboard, if that makes sense. So you can see it's just pulled all the way through the plasterboard. So obviously it's it's not the fitting that's failed, it's uh, the, the legs have gone all the way through the actual plasterboard. Right, so I've set up exactly the same test again. The only difference is, is that I've taken the base plate off my um, testing jig. Other than that, it's exactly the same test, so let's go for it. Right, so I've just got this kind of finger tight at the minute. I've tightened up the slack, let's go for it. Sitting pretty steady at about 20 kilos there. 20 kilos of force. Let's just wait. See if it settles down. Okay, that's sitting pretty steady at 21 kilos or thereabouts. Let's go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. 40, 42. Hasn't failed yet. Oh, there it goes. What was that about? 48 kilos of force? You can feel when the plasterboard gives way, but that's done pretty good. And again, even with the plasterboard completely failed, we're still getting a fairly consistent 14 kilos of force or so on that fitting. Not bad for one little fitting in drywall. Right, so I've popped the base back on my test rig. I think we've established that the base doesn't really make any difference to the test because without the base it actually got a higher reading, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But So what I've now done, I've set up the experiment again, now with the slightly bigger fitting. So before we had the five by 43 mil fittings, these were both the five by 43. Now we've got the five by 52. So the difference with the five by 52, it's, oops, it's slightly heavier duty in that, it has bigger arms on the back and it spreads the load a little bit further on the plasterboard. You can see compared to the five by, that's the five by 43 and that's the five by 52. 
Now the 5 by 43 has already done an amazing job. Let's see what the 5 by 52 can handle. Let's see if there's much difference going to the heavier duty one. Right, here we go, just finger tight again. Let's just start doing that up a bit. Comfortably up to 30 kilos of force at the minute. We're hovering around the 27, 28 mark. Let's keep going. See where that settles down. We've passed the 50 kilos mark. Bear in mind that I weigh 80 kilos, so that's not bad going in drywall. One single fitting in drywall. Feels like it's gone. You know what that's doing? Hey, hold on. Something unusual's happened here. It's come way up on the fitting at the bottom, but it still hasn't failed. You know, the plasterboard's still okay. I've just had a look from underneath. I think this will go back up to quite a high figure. Oh, there it goes. You can hear when it starts to go. Yeah. Not bad. I mean, it touched on 60 kilos there. Not bad. Easily past 50. But we're completely, completely through now. You can see it's just pulling through the plasterboard. But can you, can you see that gap that came up? Try and point with this. So we've got a gap between there and the bottom of the, uh, well, the top of the fitting. And that opened up when the back side of the fitting kind of started embedding in itself. But the plasterboard hadn't completely gone. But you can see... I'll just keep turning. That's coming all the way through. There's what's left of the fitting afterwards, by the way. So the fitting itself is fine. It's just the plasterboard's non-existent now. Completely gone. So there you go, not bad going. Don't go off my figures for anything that you're building. This is just a fun little test to see what they can withstand, but we've got to comfortably around 40 kilos with the smaller fitting and around 50 to 60 kilos with the, the bigger fitting. As I say, always go by the manufacturer's specs. The manufacturer specs will generally include a safety tolerance, maybe a factor of three or four, which kind of comes in line with what we're seeing here, because if we're seeing 45-ish kilos, divide that by three, that gets to your 15 kilos, which is what they're saying in the specs for these. So pretty accurate, to be honest. That's it for today. Any questions, pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Go on to gosforthhandyman.com and there's an article that gives you all of the figures from today's tests and I'll pop that into the article on gosforthhandyman.com and there's a link below to that. Don't forget videos are now coming out twice a week on a Tuesday and a Saturday so you're just spoiled for choice. <gasps> See you next time. Bye.